Hello, and welcome to this brief module on communicating with data, graphs and tables, design elements. In the next few minutes, we will touch on the following topics. What is visual design of data? Why do you need it? And when do you use it? Review some considerations before you begin designing. Share simple steps for visual design of data. Share examples of effective use of visual design of data. Take a quick quiz and end with additional resources. What is visual design of data? It is a method or end result of transforming numeric or textual information into a graphic format. Why do you need visual design of data? Simply, it is the most effective way to describe, explore, and summarize a set of numbers. Vision is the most powerful and efficient channel for receiving information. Approximately 70% of the sense receptors in our bodies are dedicated to vision. You can talk about numbers, percentages, and relationships all you want. However, the chances are your point will get lost. Put your data in a graph or table and suddenly everything you say makes sense. Graphs or tables help people understand data quickly. Whether you want to make a comparison, show a relationship, or highlight a trend. They help your audience see what you are talking about. To effectively communicate with data, you need to understand the strengths and weaknesses of visual perception and design. When do you use visual design of data? When you want to encourage the viewer to think about the content of the data being communicated, rather than about methodology, design, or something else when you want to avoid distorting what the data have to say, when presenting the data in a small space, or to make large data sets coherent. Also, when you want to encourage the viewer to pick up on the differences in the data. Before you begin, there are a few things you must consider. First, ask yourself this important question. What is my point? Data can be presented in many different ways, and the right design will depend on your intended audience and the message you want to communicate. The way you present your data will depend on both who you are presenting to and how it will be presented. Consider your audience and presentation medium. Detailed tables work well for printed documents, but are poor choices for a PowerPoint presentation. Use proper format for your purpose. If you want to present your audience with details, then present data in a table. If you want to show patterns and the relationships, then you should create a graph or chart. Here are three simple steps for designing tables and graphs. Step one, organize the data. Step two, highlight the data. Step three, show the data. Now, let's look at each of these steps and their best practices. Step 1. Organize the data. Tables interact primarily with our verbal system. This means we process information in a sequential fashion, either reading down columns or across rows. Tables are most useful to look up individual values, compare individual va values, and when you need to show precise values. Graphs or charts are perceived primarily with our visual system, which involves the mechanics of sight and principles of visual perception. Graphs are most useful when illustrating patterns and to reveal relationships among measurements. Another question you want to ask yourself is, what type of data are you summarizing? This will have implications on how best it should be presented. Data are either quantitative or categorical. Quantitative data measures things. Categorical data groups things. The basic types of categorical data have implications for graph selection. Nominal data is discrete and have no intrinsic order, such as gender and race. Ordinal data have prescribed order, such as levels of satisfaction, from very satisfied to neutral to very dissatisfied. They are not truly numeric, but placing them out of order would not make sense. Interval data consists of a series of sequential numerical ranges that have a distinct order and can be divided into equal portions, such as time 
age, and salary. Most data can be presented in any graph format, but here are some best practices you should consider. Use a stacked bar chart for part to whole relationships. Avoid pie charts. Instead, rely on bar charts. Pie charts are generally ineffective in presenting data and patterns. Use line graphs if the x-axis will show interval data. Intervals should always be equal in size. Use a bar graph to show groups comparison. Typically, this is nominal or ordinal data. Use scatter plot to show correlations. Use stacked bars to present cumulative totals. And if you have sparse data, use a table. Step two, highlight the data. In designing graphs, you need to make good color decisions and recognize that color palettes have meaning. Our brains intuitively recognize differences in color, size, shape, hue, orientation, and attach specific meanings to them. These visual properties are called pre-attentive variables because the process of perceiving them is automatic and immediate and does not involve conscious thought. As you design your graph, use this knowledge to intentionally highlight the most critical information. One of the best ways is through the use of color. To make good use of color, here are a few things to consider. Color basics and color meaning. The color wheel is a simple way to introduce concepts and terms related to color use. The primary colors are organized in a triangle on a wheel, red, blue, and yellow. Nestled between the primary colors are the secondary colors, purple, green, and orange. Color has three basic properties. Hue is the name of the color. Value refers to how light or dark, and intensity refers to how bright or dull. These qualities are independent of each other. Any hue can be light, mid-tone, or dark. Any hue can be intense or neutral. Colors can be complementary or analogous. Complementary colors appear on opposite sides of the color wheel. They can make colors appear brighter and heighten their intensity. Analogous colors are next to each other on the color wheel. These colors generally create harmony and unity. Qualitative palettes include colors that are distinctly different from each other. They are most successfully used to represent categorical data. Sequential palettes will typically be a single hue that ranges either from neutral to bright or light to dark. They are used successfully with ordinal or interval data. And diverging palettes are basically two sequential palettes that meet in the middle with a neutral color. They allow you to have two anchors, such as agree and disagree, and are easily distinguished by color. They are used successfully with ordinal or interval data. Best practices for highlighting data include use color meaningfully and with restraint. Remember, color is not always necessary. Shades of gray are adequate for many needs. Also, consider what is cost-effective to print and easy to duplicate. Too many or too intensive colors may overwhelm your data. Use different colors to correspond to differences of meaning in the data. Select a color palette that matches your purpose and your data. Use the three properties of color. Use intensity to highlight with bright colors. Use value to highlight with a dark value on a white background or a light color on a dark background. Use hue to highlight warm hues. Avoid using combinations of red and green to guarantee that most people who are colorblind can distinguish groups of data. Lastly, use colors that are already associated with data content. For example, use black and red for financial measures and red or blue for political parties or ideology. Show the data is the third and final step. Essentially, let the data tell the story. Don't decorate the data and simplify simplify and simplify. Research shows that features like pictures and 3D rendering are visually distracting and hinder the audience from understanding what is important and what is irrelevant. As designers, you will need to display only meaningful content and abandon anything extra. Many charts and graphs are decorated in ways 
that complicate the display with unnecessary and distracting graphics. This example illustrates why you should avoid the use of 3D patterns and excess decoration. Albert Einstein once said, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. As you design, keep what you need and discard the rest. Consider erasing or muting grid, axes, and tick marks, legends, and legend borders. Effective titles and axes labeling should reduce the need for legends. Avoid redundant data ink that depicts the same number over and over. And generally, you can eliminate lines around bar charts since they are redundant to the shape of the bar itself. Here is another example of what to avoid. Some best practices for showing data are, if you need to present precise numbers, use a table. If you need to present a pattern or a set of relationships, use a chart. And lastly, if it can be removed without compromising the message, then remove it. When you are done, look at it again and ask yourself, does the table or graph clearly communicate my point? Here is an example of good visual design. You can see the target, the median performance range, and identify where improvement began. This is the visually improved version of the over-decorated graph. This graph compares five different sectors over the same time period. You are now able to see which sector has more burglaries per month. This is the visually improved version of the redundant graph. Now let's test your knowledge. When you want to provide precise values, what do you use? A table or a graph? The answer is table. When you want to show a pattern or relationships of data, what do you use? A table or graph? The answer is a graph. Fantastic! Here are some useful resources and a list of other related topics under this series. You can find them on our YouTube channel. Search for Public Health Centers for Excellence and click on our logo. We look forward to hearing from you if you would like further technical assistance on this or other performance management topics. This presentation is part of a performance management in public health training series presented by Washington's Public Health Centers for Excellence and funded by a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The centers are located in Spokane Regional Health District and the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. Our goals are to help local health jurisdictions and tribal agencies improve their results. Prepare to meet public health standards and achieve accreditation. In addition to this training series, we offer technical assistance and resources in performance management to improve public health outcomes. If you would like to talk to us about how we can assist your organization, contact information is on the preceding slide.